After the last race at New York Auto Ring, officials are still refusing to get rid of the Super Speedway package, so cars will still be running 250 miles per hour at Talladega later in the season, as well as Euro Speedway and possibly Charlotte. A couple drivers are making their debut this week, replacing the injured drivers, so watch out for them in the race. The only one of which to DNQ was Chuck Johnson in the 64, but hopefully they'll be able to uh, live up to the drivers that they're replacing and give them some good runs today. Pole qualifying brought a huge surprise as Dan Lechleiter wins the pole, driving the 110 for his own team, Lechleiter Racing. He's driving injured right now, actually. He's got a few broken ribs and a broken finger after falling down a flight of stairs at New York Auto Ring. Isaac Michael started on his outside. Good run for him. He's uh, doing a part-time effort with Ike Durbin Incorporated in that car. And uh, did I mention that Dan Lechleiter won the uh, qualifier leading all 38 laps? Here's Jacob Eichholz driving the 49. He replaced Grigory Novakovsky in this car. Novakovsky, keep him in your thoughts. He'd be proud of this run. Eichholz is running in the top five right now on lap three, and he's driving the wheels off of that thing. Uh, I haven't seen that car up front like that since Road Atlanta. Here's Michael Grant doing a sub job for Josh Marshall, who was injured last week at New York Auto Ring, and he's not doing so great. He's in 33rd on lap 6, but then again, he's back there with the rest of his teammates, Lewis Jones and John Bracci, so it might be expected from the Australian motorsports cars. Dan Leckler continues to lead in the early stages. Barry Juvenile in second place. Uh, Leckler has opened up a pretty big gap on Juvenile there, as you can see. We're going to go back here to Tommy Urban, who's making his first start of the season, driving for his own team, Redemption Racing, uh, probably seeking redemption from that horrible season last year. And in front of him is John Jefferson, punching way above his weight in the 23 car. John Kirkpatrick, being slow as usual, he's going a lap down on lap 10. And uh, not really much to say, aside from that he's been on, he's been about three or four uh, three or four seconds off the pace in that 41 car. As you can see, people just blow by him on the inside there. And uh, Leclerc is going to put Gaspar de Souza down a lap here on lap 13. And no, no, Barry Juvenile makes a dive bomb move on the inside, and he'll take the lead from Dan Leclerc on lap 13. There is Barry Juvenile, and Clara Kindall will join him in making that pass. You see there, as uh, Leclerc just gets freight trained, he moves way to the back. Barry Juvenile takes over first place. Clara Kindall second, and Isaac Michaels moves up to a surprising third. He This is his first ever start, and uh, the second start ever for Ike Durbin Incorporated. They made a start last year with Ike Durbin in the four car at Cleveland. He didn't do too well in that car. But Isaac Michaels is punching way above his weight in this number four car, doing an excellent job. I had mentioned earlier that Dan Leckler had fallen back. He's currently in eighth place. He managed to get back into line, running right behind Ben Worthington there in the sixth car. Good run for him. Ramsey Cockner is right behind him in ninth place. And this is his first start since Road Atlanta. He's had some uh, troubles in the qualifying races. But now he's proving why he should be in these races. He's running in ninth place, as I said before and uh, doing an excellent job. I wasn't expecting to see this from the, from the 82 car at all. Here's another driver who has been steadily improving throughout the season. He was locked into Road Atlanta, but wasn't able to really uh, capitalize on that. I believe he finished way near the back. Andrew Tamarzan is running in 17th at the moment, and John Jefferson is in 11th, punching once, as I said, once again, this line is going to get very old. Punching way above his weight in the Meridian. They actually brought the Meridian this week and not the Quantum as we expected. Here is Barry Juveno getting ready to put Gaspar de Souza two laps down, as well as Robert Nelson and Nicholas Cordova's one lap down. Those cars are going pretty slow, and he's just kind of trying to work his way through traffic. Clara Kindall is punching through as well, attempting to maybe use uh, Robert Nelson as a pick. No, I don't think she will. She's just going to hang back there, but here is John Kirkpatrick going three laps down now, and it's lap 31. John Kirkpatrick being really slow as usual, and Clara Kindle moves high. Isaac Michaels is using John Kirkpatrick as a pick, and he'll pass Clara Kindle for second place as Kindle gets stuck behind. 
I think Leclerc might be trying to make a move there on the high side, but that's not going to work for him because because John Kirkpatrick is being really slow there, and he realizes that he pulls low. Lenny Jacobs into the pits. He's reporting a uh, suspension failure on that car. Tough break for him. He's going to drop out of the race really early. It's lap 31 for Lenny Jacobs, and that's going to make him the first retiree from the race. Scott Wollen having an excellent performance today. He actually managed to qualify for this race. I was surprised. He's running in 23rd right now with this underfunded team, the 0-2 car. And it looks like Carbondale's a good place for the underfunded cars to show what they're worth. And here's Lewis Jones running right in front of his teammates there. Uh, he's running about 29th, but apparently Australian Motorsports is protesting the PCC Cup decision to run the Super Speedway packages by not showing up at the Super Speedways for the rest of the season unless they change that. And I don't think they will, so that team's not going to be at any Super Speedways anytime soon. Barry Juvenal getting ready to put Barton Sandy and Dan Ferre a lap down. And it looks like Juvenal gets stuck behind Sandy. Isaac Michaels looks low. And Michaels will take the lead here coming into turn four. And you see there he beats him to the line. So Michaels will get credit for that lap. And he'll proceed to lap Barton Sandy and Dan Ferre in the 66 and 222. Michaels in his first career start looking to be a winner in his first career start. Here is... Gaspar D'Souza putting John Kirkpatrick a lap down for the first time, but here comes Michaels to put them four and five laps down. Well, uh, that just tells you how slow they've been all day and how much of a nuisance they've been to the leaders, but Gaspar D'Souza's been a bit less than, than Kirkpatrick, but you see there he blocks Michaels a bit, and Craig looked like he might have made a move for the lead, and look at Dan Lecklayer back there making a pass on Chris Benson. Joe Craig's having a good run today. He's running in second place, and uh, his season's kind of had a light lit under it since since Las Vegas. There's Eicholtz running a very, very strong third, as well as, uh, I believe that's Worthington and Lechleiter running back there, running out the top five. Bobby Dollar, after an excellent run last week, he's running in about 20th place, running right in front of Chris Winter, as well as Scott Wallen and a couple other cars. I believe that's Gavin DeGray and Tommy Urban back there, but supposedly sponsors are looking at this 98 car, so keep an eye on it for the next couple weeks. Here's Preston Bell in the 75, holding up the leader on lap 48, coming to lap 49, and, well, Preston Bell's been pretty slow all season. He's been consistently outperformed by his teammates, Barry Juvenal and Chris Benson, but I think that's because they made that 75 car their third car. Yeah, he's running in the mid to low 20s right now, as you see. I think that's even Michael Grant in front of him uh, for position. And here's Richard Dean MacGyver coming in to kick off green flag pit stops on lap 49. Joe Craig makes a move on the inside, using the lapped car of Edward Carroll as a pick. And it, he doesn't quite complete the pass here, but he'll do it entering turn three as Joe Craig completes the pass and takes the lead as Jacob Eicholtz is following him up to second place around Isaac Michaels. Great run for that 49 car. I haven't seen him perform like that since Road Atlanta. And here is Samuel Brown coming into the pits the next lap. And you see there, there's already John Jefferson and Dan Leckley is coming in as well. A couple of the leaders came in that lap. Next lap, looks like Isaac Michaels is diving onto pit road with a couple other cars, a couple other lapped cars. And the next lap, Joe Craig and the rest of the leaders follow suit as Clara Kindall makes a move to pass a few cars entering pit road. After pit stops cycle out, Dan Lecklayer takes the lead. You see uh, Chester Benson pulls up right there, right in front of him. He's going to be on the tail end of the lead lap. And what's going on back there? Where did Isaac Michaels go? He just vanished, and caution one will fly on lap 55. Kelly Blackwire emerging out of the pits doesn't realize that Isaac Michaels is there, and they take each other into the wall and go for a wild ride. Both of them go up into the air for a little bit. Michaels would drive away, but both cars were done, no doubt there. And you see there, smoke just pouring out of the uh, four car. Really tough break for him. He was running in second place and probably would have contended for the win if it wasn't for that maneuver by Blackwater. Cody Deke was the last one to pit. He managed to uh, lead a lap here, as you see right there, before the yellow flag came out. But he's going to start at the tail end of the lead lap because he just pit. So Dan Lechleiter will inherit the lead, the pole sitter for this race, with 
I believe that's Jacob Eichholz in second place, an excellent run for him. Clara Kindall in third, Joe Craig in fourth, and John Jefferson doing an excellent job there in that underfunded number 23 car, rounding out the top five. A, a great run for him. They actually brought the Meridian this week, as I said before. But Jacob Eichholz running in the 49, he's, I'm not sure if he's going to be in this car past the North American Tour, but a run like this is definitely validating his run in the car for the rest of the season. And John Jefferson, he's only running the North American rounds, but this team, they might get enough funding to show up for the European rounds because of his uh, really surprising performances. Tommy Irving gets into Robert Nelson, and he takes him into the wall, and Nelson gets a bit of damage there, but Nelson's been pretty slow this uh, entire run, and uh, Urban's been running... Running pretty good so far. He's running in about the top 20 right now. And here's John Kirkpatrick getting ready to go. Um, I believe that's six laps down at this point, lap 71. So he's not seven laps down at least, but he's still, as you can see, really slow. As just he's about four or five seconds off the pace, and I, I really don't know why this team is still running around out here. Uh, not getting black flagged yet, but here is Andy Lambert. He managed to get into this race without using the champion's provisional, and he's running in top in the top 15 right now. He's running in 15th place, battling with Cameron Taylor and Richard Dean MacGyver for that position. And his year has really kind of sucked, to be honest. He's missed he missed Las Vegas, and he had to use the champion's provisional last week to get in. So hopefully things will look up from here for him. Here's Ian Elias doing a fine job today running in ninth place. He's been running up in the top ten the entire season, aside from New York Auto Ring where he fell back a little bit, but watch out for him. He's doing a great job. Bobby Dollar suffers a tire puncture, and he just slows up on the back straightaway. No caution to fly. He gets into Michael Grant and turns him into the outside wall. I guess he was telling Grant that he was in the way, but... Bobby Dollar, tough break for him as a tire goes flat and spoils his chances at a good run. Here is Jacob Eicholtz running in second place, and he slows now. Pulling down to the apron, there's something wrong with that car. He's reporting that a, sus a part in the suspension has failed, and that will be Jacob Eicholtz's day. Tough break for him. He was looking for a good top five finish, and now that Dan Lechleiter has no competition, he's just kind of driven away from everybody and started putting people multiple laps down. Michael Grant, you see back there, he got some damage and he fell a few laps down. And now, Claire Ossier, your points leader, is running in eighth on lap 89. She is doing a fine job, once again running in the top ten, like uh, she's been doing every week thus far. And hopefully she can continue this up and actually win the championship this year. Nicholas Corridovo suffers a problem on lap 91, he was going about three laps down at that point, and he'll pull his car into the pits, and I believe it was something with the engine that was a miss in that car, and he's going to retire from the race. Caution 2 would fly here on lap 94. I guess Dan Frey gets a bit tired of lapping John Kirkpatrick multiple times, and he turns him there, coming out of turn 1, and... I guess Pete Maverick is tired of him too as he gets into him there, sends him up into Scott Wollen, and Scott Wollen puts him into the outside wall, taking both him and the 41 out of the race. Tough break for him. There goes Dan Leclerc, the leader. And, oh, what are they doing? Clara Kindall. Just, what are breaks? They just don't, they pile into this wreck, and back here we've got AJ Murphy and Claire Ossier and a couple other cars piling in. Just... No common sense. Why Why didn't they break there? You, as we went on board Joe Craig, and he's going to fall out of the race because of this, as well as Barry Juvenal and Clara Kindall and Clara Sear, your points leader. Here's Dan Lechler leading once again on the restart on lap 100. Ben Worthington took advantage of that and moved up into second place. A.J. Murphy running a very strong fourth. John Jefferson in fifth, and Cameron Taylor rounds out your top five, but we're going to have a caution right after the restart. Caution three on lap 100. On the restart, the handling on Gaspar D'Souza's car has gone away. He puts Richard Dean MacGyver into the wall, and Mac MacGyver doesn't take too well to that, and he spins Gaspar D'Souza out. D'Souza saves it, but they go five wide there, and it looks like Urban gets into Benson, and we've got a car flipping! 
down the backstretch. I believe that's Andy Lambert flipping down the backstretch. We get a good view from Tommy Urban here, as he was one of the cars that went five wide. He actually made contact with Chester Benson. And you see here, he gets into Benson. And there goes Andy Lambert up the wall. And Lambert rolls over Urban's car a little bit there and goes for multiple barrel rolls. He was able to get out of the car all right. We're going to watch here on this camera. And you just see he gets slammed into the wall. And that's just a wild ride. I haven't seen that here at Carbondale in a couple years, but Lambert would get out of the car okay. He was a little bit shaken, but all in all, he's all right. Dan Leckler continues to lead on the restart with just 21 laps to go. Ben Worthington behind him in second once again. A.J. Murphy running in third, an awesome run for him. We haven't seen much from him all season. John Jefferson in fourth, and Cameron Taylor rounds out your top five. Ramsey Cockner up to sixth place, I believe I saw back there. But Dan Lechler continues to lead, dominating all week. John Jefferson, as I said before, he's up to fourth place by lap 109, and he's just doing an awesome job here today. I didn't expect that car to be anywhere near the front, but as I said before, I guess this race is the time for the underdogs to shine, and, well, look at the top five. The only one of those cars that was actually near the front last year was, I believe, yeah, Cameron Taylor, who is currently running in fifth and trying to hold off uh, Ramsey Cockner for that position here on lap 111. There's only a few laps to go, and Cameron Taylor doing an awesome job here today. He's uh, kind of stuck on the outside. There's a bunch of cars passing him on the inside there, but those are all lapped cars, so... Good run for him. White flag. Dan Lechleiter leads, and you see Tommy Urban up there. He might interfere with this because he's got a bit of roof damage, and he's way off the pace after that accident with Andy Lambert. But I don't think that Lechleiter will catch him because here you see he's not catching him fast enough, and Lechleiter rounds the final turn, and Dan Lechleiter from Florida will take his first ever PCC Cup Series win here at Carbondale. It's a rookie top three here at Carbondale as Lechleiter, Worthington, and Murphy are all on the podium and they are all rookies. An excellent run for John Jefferson in that underfunded number 23. Expect more sponsorship on that car after that run. Cameron Taylor rounds out the top five as I mentioned before. Ramsey Cockner, excellent run for him. First race for him since Road Atlanta. He'll hold on to sixth place. Chris Benson gets two top tens in a row. He'll finish seventh in this race. Ian Elias continues to show why he is a championship contender this year. He finishes eighth. Pete Maverick, also a championship contender, he finishes in ninth place. And Andrew Tamerzan, we weren't expecting much of anything from him all season, especially after that run at Road Atlanta, but he rounds out the top 10, an excellent run for that 53 Zenus.